great is the Lord. Mighty his love for this world. And mighty his love for you this morning. We praise you and worship you, Lord, and give you thanks. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> So last week we had the trampolining um, preacher, if you remember. I think his head almost touched the ceiling at one point last week, if you remember. Um, so, but uh, Roland's down with his, uh, his grandson's christening today. Um, so you stuck with me and I've left my trampoline at home. So I'm afraid you're going to you're gonna have to put up with a slightly more static display this morning. Um, but we're on there, we're continuing our, our, our series about responsibility. And you remember a few weeks ago we looked at personal responsibility and the foundation of what that was, um, of how the commandments of Jesus were to love God with all our heart, to love our neighbour as ourselves, and that in order to fulfil those two commandments there was a requirement for an element of sacrifice. We had to be prepared to sacrifice in order to put God first and other people first. And Jesus said, you deny yourself, pick up your cross. And follow me. And in Romans 12, we saw that verse about offering ourselves as living sacrifices, which was our spiritual worship. So that idea of sacrifice. Last week, we were looking, Roland was looking at prayer, corporate prayer, and how part of our responsibility of our mission of belonging to, to, to Christ is that we come together to pray. And where two or three agree on earth, uh, the scriptures tell us, then it is done in heaven. And, and whatever we ask in the name of Jesus, according to the will of God, we know uh, Jesus, uh, God hears us and responds to our prayer. So coming together to pray is a powerful weapon that we have as we stand in the fallen world and as we fight the spiritual evil that is at work in the world. The power of prayer together is, is immensely strong and is immensely important. This morning, we're going to look at the concept of the body of Christ and our responsibility within that body. Now, the body of Christ is something which is a, a phrase we often hear and often know. It comes from a passage in 1 Corinthians. So if you want to pick up your, your Bibles on the, on the pews there, we're going to look at uh, four passages this morning, so it would be good if you could open. It's on page 1153. <coughs> page 1153, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and starting to read at verse 27. Okay, have you all got, got it, 1153? 1154. Oh, is it? 54, is it? Okay. Okay, starting at verse 12. 12. Yes, the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, uh, 12 verse 12. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> We've cleared that up, that's good. <coughs> so we'll just, read it. we'll just read it through together and let it speak to us. The body is a unit. Though it is made up of many parts, and though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. We were all baptised by one spirit into one body, <clears throat> whether Jew or Greek, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Now the body is not made up of one part, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, cease to be part of the body. <coughs> and if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, cease to be part of the body. And if the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? And if the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts of the body every one of them just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, 
where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. The head cannot say to the feet, I do not need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honourable, we treat with special honour. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. <coughs> While our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honour to the parts that lacked it. So that there should be no division in the body. But that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. Now you, and he's speaking to us this morning, now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. So I don't know what part you are, but you're a part. Whenever I look in the mirror and I say to God, what part am I? You know, I've said this to you before, I always, I, my mind immediately goes to, to me being the appendix. You know? Basically, because nobody knows where it is and nobody knows what it does. You know, that, that sort of sums me up really, you know. So, um, but we are all part of the body of Christ. We're called together, you know. And if you think about this, it's, it's it's entirely sensible, you know. If you take if you take the brain out of the head and put it on a plate, what can it do? Absolutely nothing. Can it walk anywhere? No. Can it speak? No. Can it listen? No. It needs feet and legs and arms. It needs a blood supply. It needs a heart to pump the blood around. It needs all the little messages that go back and forth and, and all the rest of it around the body. You know, it needs, it needs food and nourishment. It needs a whole range of things to be able to function as a brain. And yet without that brain functioning, the rest of the body wouldn't function. So to put it in basic terms, you can't function without me and I can't function without you. I mean, that's fundamentally what we're saying here. We're part of the body and we exist together. And the body is like unto Christ. We are Christ's body. So it's like Jesus himself is here in Agmaston, well we know he is a spirit, in a spiritual sense, in a physical sense we are the representation of Jesus in this community. <clears throat> and amongst us we have roles and responsibilities and parts to play, whether big parts or little parts it makes no difference, everything is equal, that's what this passage is saying. It doesn't matter what part you are, it's not about you, it's not about your ego, it's not even about your human capabilities. It's about playing your part alongside everyone else to the glory of God. We're going to look at some passages now that, um, first about leadership roles, secondly about roles of service, and thirdly about some uh, worship, and, about worship and gatherings. So if you'd like to turn to page 1175 and Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 on page 1175. <clears throat> okay, got it? Page 1175, Ephesians chapter 4, and from verse 11. <clears throat> I want to go back, I just made, <coughs> sorry. Um, Verse 7 says, to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it, which is quite really an important phrase, a, a sentence, because the whole point about the body is we, we are called to be who we are with our capabilities, great or small. We are called by Christ to be part of the body. Um, and that's, so it's very important. Each one of us, by the grace that has been given to us, has been a point apportioned to us. So, verse 11, it was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, 
some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers. So different roles of leadership. And the reason for those roles is verse 12, to prepare God's people for what? Works of service. The body of Christ is to serve in the community of which it is part. So we're called to serve not only one another, not only God, but our community. Prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together, by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. The role of leadership therefore, the responsibility of that, is to train and to build up so that every part of the body knows its role and in love can serve one another than the community. And we build each other up in love as each does his part. Let's turn on to the concept of service a little bit now. Romans chapter 12 on page 1139. 1139, Romans chapter 12. <coughs> Romans 12, 1139. I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good pleasing and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we who are many form one body and each member belongs to all the others. I love that word belongs. I belong to you and you belong to me. It's a lovely concept, isn't it? <clears throat> as a family, as a body, drawn together in the love and forgiveness of Christ looking out for one another, belonging to one another, in need of one another. So in Christ we form one body, each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, then let him do it <coughs> cheerfully.
So all of those gifts are given, but they're all active. If you have a gift, whatever calling you have on your life, you're supposed to use it. If your gift is serving, it says, let him serve. It's an active thing. We have natural abilities as human beings. And those natural abilities can be taken by God and enhanced and used for his glory. But equally, God equips us sometimes with new gifts and new abilities in a way which is supernatural to our naturalness, if you like. Whatever we have, whether it's natural gift taken by God and used, or whether it's something that God gives us in a more supernatural sense, we, we lay it back in his service to him at his feet. And all of us have some role to play. These are not the, necessarily the glamorous ones. I mean, you, you just look at it. Serving, verse 7. If it's serving, then serve. What does serving mean? It means looking after, doing something for someone else. You know? A meal, you serve a meal. That's the phrase we use, don't we? But it can also be helping other people in terms of giving them a lift. Or babysitting for them, or taking care of them. And there's one here, isn't there, about if it's contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. It's about our money and our possessions and how we share them and how we use them with each other. If it's encouraging, that's about getting alongside people, isn't it? And giving them a little note and a little bounce and reminding them of the joy and the love of God in their lives and that God has the answer for all things. It's about encouraging people and lifting them up when they're suffering from that little bit of depression or that anxiety or that worry or that concern. It's about encouraging them. And showing mercy is all about forgiveness, not counting the cost of, people, uh, uh, of, of people's actions so much as leading them to the point of forgiveness and mercy, where they can know that love of Christ and can be forgiven and released from the pain and the worry of their selfishness and sin. And we go back to 1 Corinthians 12 on page 1153. So we've looked at the concept of the body of Christ and how it all hangs together. We've looked at the roles of leadership within that, within that and those roles that were given for the body to be encouraged and taught and, and grow. We've looked at a list in Romans of service that begin to get to that idea of each one of us has something to offer and something to give as we work and relate to other people in the fellowship and in our community. And now in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, uh, at verse 4, we come to the very specific thing about spiritual gifts um, given by the Holy Spirit, uh, and particularly many of these are, are, relate very much to um, the corporacy of the body when we come together for, to praise and worship, but not exclusively. <laughs> verse 4, there are different kinds of gifts but the same spirit, only one source, only one source. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. So because I have one gift, that you might recognize and you don't it's not a question of being jealous that i've got something and you haven't it's about realizing that you have something that i haven't got and it's about both of us sharing together to be, to to aid one another to bless one another to bless our church family and the body of christ of which we are part and to bless the wider community our neighbors our families our our friends as we share that love of christ with them. It's not about status, it's not about position, it's not about, it's not about pizzazz, it's about the heart of God's love. The same God gives as to each of us as he wills. Verse 7, now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. It's never given for ego, it's never given for, for, for monetary value, it's given for common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit the message 
of wisdom. When we share with others, God can speak into our hearts to share something with them, a perspective with them, a word of scripture with them, something with them that is speaking into their situation, wisdom that comes from God and his word. To another, the message of knowledge by means of the same spirit. We see this in the ministry of Jesus. So there's the woman at the well. Jesus knows all about her, 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 her exes and the fact that she's living with a guy she's not married to, etc. He knows. How did he know? Because it's a word of knowledge. The spirit gives that knowledge. And sometimes when we're in ministry with other people, God will give us information. He'll give us a word or he will give us a feeling or a hunch or something and there'll be a bit of a nudge and we know it's time to share that because it will open the door for the ministry situation that we are in. God gives us words of knowledge, knowledge that we would not normally know but come given by the Spirit of God. Not for our benefit ever but for the benefit of others. Verse 9, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one spirit, to another miracle, uh, miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another the ability to speak in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he gives them to each one just as he determines. Now, if you read that passage carefully, it does not say to everybody. Given to the body of Christ, yes, but we are parts within that. And he says quite clearly, to one faith, to another, miraculous powers, to another the ability to be, uh, distinguish between spirits, to another the ability to speak in tongues and so on. It's when we bring these gifts together in the body of Christ and through our ministry that we bless one another and we bless other people. It's back to that idea that we are all different parts of the body with different a a things to offer, whether we are offering um, love and humble things, service or whatever, or whether we have this kind of spiritual gift. Whatever God gives us, we share with one another and with our community to, to the glory of his name. And have a look at verse 27. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is part of it. So, we have this idea of the body of Christ. You know, if I'm an appendix, you're a, you're a toenail or whatever. You know, we're all different parts of the body. We all have roles to fulfill. So the question for us this morning, and for you and me, is just to pray and say, what's God calling me to do? What am I gifted in doing? What gifting and service can I offer into the, fel the Fellowship of Hope Community Church and into the community of Telford around us and Shrewsbury, where we live? Do you recognise in yourself that calling of God for you to be an encourager or to be a servant or to share your money and wealth? Or do you feel that you're given messages that you don't always share but maybe you should start? Or a picture? Or you feel that you can tell the difference between an evil spirit and an ordinary spirit? What is it that God has given you? Maybe you're just a servant. Maybe you're a speaker. Maybe you're this, maybe you're that. We are all parts. If we could work out how to do it this morning, we could twist, you know, play that game Twister, you know, with the, the mat on the floor and all the dots, you know? We could twist and position ourselves and we would end up, if we could work it out, and we'd end up looking like Christ. Because each one of us would take our place in the structure and be fulfilling our role. The contrary to that is that when one of us is missing, the body suffers a little pain. 
So what happens to my body if I lose my foot? I could still walk, but I'd have to have a crutch or a walking stick. I would hobble. I probably couldn't run anymore. I could just about get along, but I'm, I'm disabled. I can't be as effective as I would otherwise be. And if my eyes stop working, I could still hear and I could do other things, but I couldn't read my Bible, I couldn't watch a television, I couldn't drive a car. When one of us does not recognise the gifting and use that gifting and offers to serve in some way within the body, then the body is marginally or majorly disabled. And so it's a challenge for us. We're back to this responsibility. When God equips us and gifts us, we have that responsibility as Christians, as part of the body of Christ, to share that gifting and that ministry and that service in whatever way. So if you're unsure about all this, and I haven't got, really got a clue as to what you are and what you've got and, what you, and how you should operate, I'm not suggesting, do not walk away from here this morning feeling inadequate. Oh, I can't live up to this. That's not what this is about. This is about wanting to move forward for the glory of God. It's not about status or position. And if, you, if, if, if you're unsure how to live, then carry on doing what you're doing. Just loving people and encouraging people, you know, is it, is, is it lifted? It's, an, it's, a, it, it's a relatively straightforward thing to do. You know, some of you serve. We deliver the magazines, for example. It's a gift of service to the community when we're out, whoever delivers will be stuck to the door. We serve each other, you know, there's a, a rotor that runs, uh, runs our, our coffee on a Sunday morning, for example, and dawn is it today. You know, there's, a, there's an element of service for one another. It's working out what you are good at and what God is calling you. So pray about it. Ask God to equip you, because he is the one who does it. Not me, not society, but in the kingdom of God, it is the Holy Spirit at work in you that gifts you and enables you and encourages you. So seek him out. Am I doing what you want me to do? Do you want me to do new things? How can I better serve you in the body of which I am part? How can I better serve you in the community? Offer yourselves as a living sacrifice, says Romans 12. Holy and acceptable to God. For that is your spiritual worship. Let's pray together. As we have a moment of reflection to think about those passages of scripture and for what God's calling is on our lives this morning. God loves you. God is thrilled that you are here this morning. God wants to bless you and use you. If you want to love God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and to love your neighbour as yourself, then offer yourself in service to him now. Just say, Lord, here I am. Take me and use me. Here I am, Lord. Take me and use me. Let go of control. Give it to God and let him sweep you off your feet as you serve one another here as part of our church family and as you live in the community and your love and joy in the Lord begins to reach out in light into the darkness of the world around us. Lord, we pray that you might bless us with the power of your Holy Spirit, create in us those gifts of service and of ministry and in, encourage us, Lord, to step out in faith, to love one another, to always be the friend, always be the hand to help, always be the heart that loves and the life that serves. Lord, use us in this community of Telford. Bless us, Lord. Fill us with your power. May we see your kingdom come and your will be done in Admaston and Telford and Shrewsbury as it is in heaven. Amen.